Hey, good afternoon. It's Gary from GT Alaska Adventures. Uh, thought I'd do a quick little video today and kind of show you a little bit more about my my shop. I know you've seen some of the videos I've posted, and uh, I'm gonna go over a few things with you today from the dust collector you see kind of over here in the corner, uh, radio alarm saw, and my chop saw. So this uh, this bench is all my deal. I made it, and uh, it's all one root fence. So both saws work off the same root fence. You don't have to uh, mess around. And, you know, you take one board from there and cut it and bring it right down here and use the same root fence and life is good. So uh, my little uh, drill press with the uh, modified uh, working table that I put out to that. And then I got a little band saw down there on the end. So none of these tools are, uh, you know, top of the line uh, pro woodworking tools. But uh, I've done a lot of things with them, and uh, kind of like any tool, if you take the time and you put in a little effort and uh, and dial it in, <clears throat> make sure that things are straight and level and, and accurate, um, you can get some pretty good work out of pretty much any tool. You know, obviously getting the right blades on saws, uh, making sure they're sharp um, makes a big difference. So, and uh, a little bit later on here, and I'll show you too the uh, my table saw. And kind of walk you through how the dust collection thing works and how I set all that up um, years ago. So, do a lot of woodworking projects, uh, and that maybe at the end of this video, I'll, I'll, I'll try to put some pictures in there of stuff I've done. Uh, this winter has been pretty much kind of dedicated to what you've seen so far on my channel. Uh, my, my John, John Deere tractor there. Um, I had a little, little injury in uh, August there, I tore my AC in my shoulder. so combination of that going on and you know having the tractor to play with I I didn't I didn't partake in any woodworking projects but that's pretty un, unusual for me I usually every winter I'm, I'm doing something or making something so a little bit my, about my shop it is a, a self-built shop me and my wife and uh, had some help from some friends some really good friends especially on the on the uh, erecting of the walls and putting up the uh, trusses had a, a great friend that moved out of the state, unfortunately, but uh, he was, uh, uh, I mean, the whole part, basically, I was his helper. He, he helped uh, put all that together, but from that point on, my wife and I, we pretty much uh, took everything on ourselves, you know, the wiring, insulating, uh, drywall, putting uh, outside, uh, it's all uh, wrapped in metal, metal roof, metal sides, uh, grudge. Uh, the foundation, whatever I, I dug that by hand because I didn't have any kind of equipment at the time and I wanted to shop and was kind of on a limited budget. So we uh, made do with what we what we had, you know, which was a shovel, a pickaxe, and a lot of uh, a lot of labor. So, but it turned out awesome. Uh, maybe just for the fun of it, I'll put a couple of pictures of that uh, foundation work, dirt work that I did. I'm pretty pretty proud of myself on that. So. But it's a 20 by 30 shop. It's got 10 foot walls. Um, it's got R21 insulation in the walls. It's got R38 insulation in the ceiling. It's all uh, vapor barrier uh, wrapped, um, acoustic ceiling and all the seams. So it's it's pretty airtight. I've got uh, four inches of concrete on the floor. It's a monolithic slab, um, which is a thicker edge slab there. So. Um, then I heat it with a, a toil, a little toil 56. Uh, some of you folks might not know what the toils even are, but they're a little, a little, uh, very, very efficient little uh, oil furnace. You know, uh, number one heating oil year round. I run a dehumidifier in here year round because uh, when I bring in wood that's got moisture in it, and that kind of helps suck some of that moisture out of there. Plus the tractor with all the you know, a little bit of snow that I can't get wiped off, it, it helps kind of suck that water up and, and whatnot. So, yeah. So, anyhow, I'll stop yakking and uh, we'll get to, get to showing you some of the tools and some of my setup. So, so I thought I'd show you real quick, just in case anyone was wondering whether I had a TV in my shop. You know, person's got to have a TV so they can watch YouTube while they're working on things, right? Nothing like distractions. And a surround sound system. But, uh, I've had that for years, built the shop, mining music out here, so I bring that out here. This thing is amazing, puts out incredible sound. 
Some more speakers back there. There's speakers all the way around my shop. And we'll come down here. And there's that uh, Toyo heater I was talking about. That's Laser 56. And right next to it is my subwoofer for my speaker. So. so this here is my table saw. It's a Delta. It's a contractor saw. It, uh, it's been a really good saw. Had uh, really good luck with it and produced some really some really nice stuff. So uh, <clears throat> here on the end, I added this on there. It's a uh, basically it's a router table. It's a little extension I made on there um, for a, a, a router. And that's all I had at the time and currently still own is uh, it's, that's a pl plunge router. It's a little Craftsman plunge router. So I made up this little deal here. Uh, you just basically crank this handle and your router tip will, uh, or router blade rather, will come up, up or down, depending on where you need it. And then you can, it's got a little lock feature. You can lock it in. So yeah, it works good. You got your little on off switch and a little plug in over here. Um, someday I hope to, uh, I've seen some other guys do some, uh, oh, some other deal, r router table uh, deals that you can buy. And, and uh, supposedly they fit right into this uh this extension there so someday i'm going to do that and get something a little bit nicer but uh it works fine um it's a little bit uh, cumbersome setting it up but uh take a little bit of time like everything if you take the time to uh set stuff up it usually produces better results so i can use my rip fence here on the table saw to uh adjust it hold it and move it at the same time but anyways you can kind of get the idea Get that adjusted where you need to, and then feed your feed your stock in and and uh, do your cut. So this uh, I made this. It's a it's a hollow box uh, made out of plywood, and it's got a little cut out here on the bottom. So all your chips and stuff with the uh, applied section from the dust collector here will uh, pretty much suck all them chips right through that box and up into the hose. And I hardly get anything on the floor, so. You can see the dust collection hose hooked up on the back side of the table saw, and uh, that hose just gets transferred from there over to here when I need it. And uh, <clears throat> there's my old dust collector, a shop, uh, shop back. This year, rolling table, workbench, rather. Uh, I use that for my outfeed table. Um, I like to have everything to be able to be stowed when I want to work on a vehicle in here. Uh, if I need to pull a, a, my truck or wife's vehicle in here, I need to be able to move it and get it out of the way. So it's nice having the wheels on everything. I can roll it and get it out of the way. In behind there is a, uh, you see, uh, it's a crosscut sled that I made. Um, time to time that comes in real handy, just uh, sets in your miter tracks here on the table saw and you can go to go to work using using that so so here's the dust collector and uh so it's got a little t on there and a couple blast gates on there this blast gate here would go to the hose that leads to the uh, the table saw rather table saw router and my planer all three would run off of that hose when i when i'm using them so you close this one gate here open this other gate up down here and that that uh that that leg of the, um, the T rather I guess uh, feeds this whole table and there's hose that goes all the way it's underneath there you can kind of see it it's down underneath there and it goes all the way to the other end down here and there's a couple blast gates right there get it to focus for you the top one there the two inch one is for um, feeding my uh, my drill press and this other one here on the bottom is for feeding my bandsaw so we'll start on this end that's my little bandsaw all these tools the drill press the bandsaw my uh my bench vise down below here you'll see my planer and then you'll see my little scroll saw you'll see they all have wooden bases on them and they all have this uh shelf liner material on it or on the bottom rather glued to it so i can uh we'll give you a little visual like so when i'm working on this end of the table which is my radial arm and my chop saw with the uh, one uh rip fence when i'm working on that 
I don't want them other tools to be sticking out in the way. So you can kind of see right now the drill press is out of the way, but the uh, bandsaw on the, down the end is kind of sticking up, sticking out too far. So it allows me to slide it on the workbench really nice and easily. It doesn't screw up my workbench or mar it up. Um, so that's why I attach those bases to, to every one of my tools and I uh, can slide them around. And, you know, if a case where I need uh, extra room to to do a setup or something or construct a, a woodworking project, I need a workbench space, I can I can slide them all. I can unho unhook the hoses and slide them all to one end or whatever the case may be to need or whatever I need to, to make it work. So uh, bandsaw is pretty basic, you know, just uh, works good. It's a matter of uh, getting your table square with your blade and getting these little uh, blade guides set up right. Um, dust collection part of it works uh, pretty good. I get, I mean, if once I turn the dust collector on, I can take a piece of paper and put it on here and it sucks it right down tight to the table. So, I mean, for the most part, it uh, it does a good job. It keeps, uh, keeps the dust from being all over the workbench. My uh, drill press, um, this table is all something I constructed uh, out of plywood. It's got uh, T-tracks in there I ordered up from Amazon or whatever woodworking magazines. The back here has got a little rip fence. It's uh, adjustable. You can lock it down to the table. Uh, this insert back here can be taken out once it gets all screwed up, kind of like how this one's starting to get. You can pull that insert out and put a new insert in there, and you got a nice flat working surface again. Uh, this part here, see the hose, and kind of see the hose going, and it goes around, it goes down to the, the workbench there. This where the last gate is that uh, that uh, feeds that or applies the suction to that. So you can kind of adjust this deal to how you need it to suck off the surface of what you're, you know, drilling a hole in. So got uh, the light to come with it here. Find a switch for it. There's your light. It's adjustable. Um, I got this light for Christmas, actually, and uh, didn't really know what I'd have a use for it for. But I think, you know, it's magnetized, so it's good for working on vehicles. But uh, actually, I actually think it's going to come in pretty handy for doing stuff on this uh, drill press so um so anyways yeah let's go back over here let's go to the uh very alarm saw i'm going to talk about this a little bit this uh so this table and stuff i kind of talked about it before you know i made this table myself uh ideas and stuff on the internet and coming up with my own ideas but what i was most intrigued about is this here is uh, this is a, a hollow box again, it's hollow underneath. And then back here in the back somewhere, there's a, a four inch four inch fitting that you buy, plastic fitting that hooks up for your duck dust collection hoses. And so you drill a hole in your bench, put the fitting in there. And so when I turn my dust collector on and, and apply suction to this part of my workbench, one tool at a time, that's how I do it. And you get the most suction that way. This supplies a, a vacuum to this whole box, and this box doesn't have a front on it, uh, kind of where it meets the uh, rip fence. It doesn't have a front on it, so that's hollow in behind that, and I made all these holes in the front down here by the bottom. Then it allows it to uh, <clears throat> suck all the dust, so real quick, like, I'm going to turn on the dust collector here and make sure i got the gates in the right position. Okay, we should be good. Okay, uh, gonna turn it on. Kind of get the idea. It, uh, it was really good, man. It sucks that uh, dust from that saw uh, right in, right in off the table. Most of your dust, your blade, you know, the orientation of your blade, it's it uh, it throws it right back into that box anyway. So it. Uh, does a nice job. These, if you ever run one of these saws before, they are a messy saw. I'm talking sawdust everywhere. And uh, since I've made this bench and put it in here, it's been it's been amazing how how well it works. So, and uh, my chop saw, this uh, plans and stuff, the ideas off the internet as well. And I kind of take them and for what they're worth and and. Uh, study them and kind of look at them and then I come out and design my own that's going to work best for my tool. Every tool is different and uh, different dimensions and so sometimes I mean if you're 
If you're copying an idea off the internet and you got the same exact tool, yeah, more power to you. It's probably going to work out great for you. But uh, nine times out of ten, you don't have that same tool and you got to adapt and overcome and improvise and make it work for you, right? So um, <clears throat> these uh, curtains, I don't know if I've really seen that idea on there, but uh, I, I come up with that and decided that that's what I wanted for mine. It still allows you to, uh, to uh, do your 45s. You can still turn it. I mean, it kind of depresses the curtain a little bit uh, different than what it is right now, but still fully functional. Uh, a little bit about that. Same concept. You got a, a, a hole back there, you see, where that's where your dust collection hose comes from underneath the bench. And, you know, one tool at a time again, I'll apply, I'll apply suction to just this tool. And uh, so most of your dust will fly back into this box. This this. Unfortunately, it's a little messier than, uh, it's actually messier than the radial arm saw is, believe it or not. Uh, I would never have dreamt that, but uh, that uh, setup I made for that is, is quite impressive. It works really well. So if you happen to have one of these and you got the time, you want to put in the effort, I highly recommend. Uh, there's, uh, I don't remember, and I doubt I'd be able to, be able to tell you where to go but uh i think i've seen it on youtube there's uh there's plans out there for those boxes or ideas of how to do it it's pretty basic i mean you just make it to what you need and but anyways getting back to this i'm going to uh open and close the right dust collection ports here hopefully there we should be good so keep an eye on that curtain there i'm gonna turn this on you can kind of see it it has suction there we go so like i said it works pretty good sucks it in and uh sucks most of the solid dust out of there i still get some that kind of will migrate out here and it'll migrate on the top but um i don't know i just uh i'm always running the shop back around and kind of sucking stuff off sucking stuff up as we go because i don't like the i don't like working on the messy stuff so Touch brief, briefly on this planer. It's a DeWalt planer. Um, never thought I'd really have a need for one, but uh, yeah, I'd never go back and not own a planer. That's it as far as uh, what I got going on. Uh, these benches were all made by me, and and uh, the the countertop on this other one I'll talk about briefly is uh, that's a solid wood core door, and uh, just uh, basically two by four and some plywood down below for the the framework and super solid and super nice and level it's been uh been a great little workbench at uh, the beginning there you see some handles on there it's got casters down there you can kind of maybe see um those handles would rotate up and depress them uh two by sixes with the casters on it and the hinges you can kind of see it and uh, so you can roll that workbench around with pretty much kind of a couple fingers if there wasn't a bunch of tools on it but um uh, I don't do that anymore. I put it up against the wall and it's level and flat with the other uh, workbench and I haven't moved it in years. But uh, when I first started out here, that was the only workbench I had. So anyhow, that's about all I got on the, my workshop. Okay, so we're gonna try to wrap this video up. Um, mostly today, I just kind of want to show you around a little bit, uh, show you some of the tools I got. Uh, show you some of the improvements and uh, modifications I've made to them to uh, make them more user friendly and, and all around better, better, better working tool, more user friendly for me. Um, done a lot of different projects throughout the years. I've been, uh, I think we're going on year number seven or so roughly, of having a shop and being able to come out here and have a warm place to, to do it, you know, and, and having some tools instead of just uh, you know this rail alarm saw and a chop saw and <clears throat> that being kind of out in a little storage shed and having to fire off some kind of secondary heater to you know get it to 50 degrees or something like that you know I come out here it's uh it's uh whatever I got the toyo set at it should be 65 70 some degrees uh, nice and warm um, it's just a fun place to be I spend a lot of time out here so. Anyhow, um, I'll try to include some of the photos and stuff of things I've done. Um, everything that uh, I've done out here, uh, I'm super proud of. Um, it's, there's nothing better than 
than going in the house or going uh, someplace, you know, I've made some little camp souls, we take out camping with us, you know, every time I fold one out, it's like, you know, it's a sense of pride that you made it, uh, it's still functioning, it, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, of value, you know, and uh, so anyways, that's what I kind of wanted to show you around a little bit, because uh, I'll probably, in the future, be doing some projects out here, and, and uh, I'd like to share them with you, and, and uh, show you some of the things that I've created, um, so. Anyhow, um, I'd like to take a minute to tell you thanks uh, for those of you that have watched and continue to watch. It uh, means a lot to me. Um, like I say, brand new at this, and uh, I look at the little uh, YouTube studio, studio analytics pretty much kind of daily and uh, just kind of see how things are going and stuff. And it's, it's pretty exciting to see the numbers of the videos uh, increasing. Uh, by no means am I. Uh, Anywhere as close to a lot of the channels I watch, and and uh, I don't know if uh, I ever fathom to to get to their uh, numbers. You know, that'd be great. But uh, I appreciate you watching. Um, means a lot to me. And uh, please uh, feel free to comment. I enjoy the comments. Uh, and they're fun to answer and, and just uh, to share more of the story because God knows I always got more to my stories. So anyhow. Um, Thanks again. Um, if you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you'd uh, subscribe to my channel and and uh, please hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video and and uh, share it with your friends. Maybe you got somebody find it interesting to watch as well. So thanks again, and I hope you have a great day.